Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 30, and I'm going to discuss spherical polar coordinates. In general, where I'm going next is I'm going to be discussing the, the Laplace's equation in spherical coordinates, and I'll be moving up to discussing the Schrodinger equation in spherical coordinates. And the reason I'll be doing that is I'd like to solve for the wave function of the hydrogen atom. The videos previous to this, which um, I suppose are relevant in many respects, our video 29 will discuss the properties of separable solutions. Videos 26 through to 28 will discuss three examples of solving the differential equations using the method of separation of variables, specifically a solved Laplace's equation. In video 25, we discuss the characteristic equation and the general solution for such differential equations. Video 24 discusses the theory of separation of variables. And videos 20 through to 23 discuss Laplace's equation. So polar coordinates are something which lots of people find difficult and to be honest, I don't, I don't think that there's any reason for them to, provided it's explained properly. So hopefully I'll be able to, uh, I'll be able to do that. So let you be the judge. So let's say in our Cartesian coordinate system we have z, we have x, and we have y. And we have an arbitrary, we have an arbitrary vector in space like this. So the vector is of length r. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to project my vector onto the x, y plane. And the best way to do it, I think, is just to draw a, ve draw a line parallel to the x-axis first and draw a line parallel to the y-axis and join where they cross with your the tip of your vector. Now it's not perfect, but it, it does help. I suppose what we're trying to visualize here is that your vector r has components or has a projection onto the xy plane. So the next thing we note is that we have the following uh, we have the following relationships. If we define if I define phi as being here and theta as being here we get, if you look closely, that this is r cos phi. And I'm going to write c for now on instead of cos and s for psi. This is r sine phi. And this one here is r sine theta. So what we def define is as follows. The theta angle is your polar angle. Phi is your azimuthal angle. And R clearly is your just your radius. Now, what the three of these will do is, if we apply separation of variables to something which we've put into polar, spherical polar coordinates, it will separate out the equation into three ordinary differential equations. A polar angle equation, an azimuthal equation, and a radial equation. That's exactly what happens with the hydrogen atom, and we get different quantum numbers when we solve for each one of them. So the azimuthal will give us, it'll give us uh, your angular momentum, polar will give us your m, and the radial angle, we, this will give us, uh, which will, this will give us n. Anyway, so going back to our, to our drawing here, we can make the following transformations, that x, is equal to r cos phi times the sine of theta that y is equal to r times the sine of theta and the sine of phi and that z is equal to r cos theta z is simply going to be equal to r cos theta So there are our transformations. You have to just you have to just accept that I'm going to write them as C and S because it's quite difficult to write them on my tablet this way. Now, a theorem from partial der derivatives says the following: If you have a function f of a and b, let's say it's a function of two variables, and I want to get df, the infinitesimal change in the f function. So what we do is we get del f del a dA plus del f 
shall be db. So we can see x is a function of theta and phi, and so is and r, and so is y, and so is z. By the way, I'm just after just after forgetting something here. Just very let me very quickly let me sketch what we had a moment ago. If you're wondering where those transformations came from, and you're wondering how come we'll say x depends on the three variables and so does so does y, and but z doesn't. If in let's say for example, so this is z, this is x, and this is y. If I move this point here the whole way down to here, then this section is equal to this section. But this was or sine theta. So we can see that y depends on theta, but when out when out here it also depends on phi. So or y depends on both theta and phi. And instead instead of moving it moving the point down to the y axis, if you instead move it to the x axis, you'll find that this time is that the phi component is so we that's the same reason why we have a phi component and we have a theta component for x. So anyway, putting that all together, we can rewrite, I'm just gonna write one of them, dx, as del x, del r, dr, plus del x, del theta, d theta, plus del x, del phi, d phi. And it's the same thing for the y, and it's so something very similar for z. In fact, you could write the same thing for z, and you'll find that some of the terms just go to zero. So what I'm going to do now is just plug in all of the relevant partial derivatives, which we can take from our identities into each of these, and we're going to get the following. You'll find that dx is equal to cos theta, excuse me, cos phi, sine theta, dr, plus r cos phi, times the sine of theta d theta, or excuse me, the cos of theta d theta, and we take away from that r sine phi d phi. That's x dy is equal to sine of theta sine of phi dr plus r times the cos of theta times the sine of phi d theta and we need to add to that r times the sine of theta and the cos of phi d phi and finally then for z this one is shorter r cos theta dr minus r sine theta d theta. Okay? So what we do next is we note the following. That if we want to write an arbitrary vector in Cartesian space, let's say a, it's going to be a sub x in the i hat, a sub y in the j hat, and a sub z in the k hat. But we're trying to transform from Cartesian coordinates to spherical polar coordinates, which means we're going to have an a sub r, r hat, an a sub theta, theta hat, and an a sub phi, phi hat. So the question is, how do we calculate each of these components? Before we do that, we need to note that r hat is going to be a sub r divided by the magnitude of a sub r. And similarly, something similar for theta hat and for phi hat. Now how do we calculate what a sub r is, what a sub theta is, and what a sub, uh, a sub phi is? Well, we do this 
by first noting we can write a as or cos phi sine theta i hat plus or sine phi sine theta j hat plus or cos theta k hat because all I did there was sub in what x, y and z are so in order to get a sub r, a sub theta and a sub phi I differentiate it so we'll say a sub r is going to be del a del r and so on a sub theta is going to be del a del theta and a sub phi is going to be del a del phi so that's how you get that's how you get the, the components and like I said then r hat is simply going to be it's going to be del a del r and this is going to be a vector divided by the magnitude of del a del r and something similar for the other two components now while it looks like it's going to get very 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 hairy because you've got so many components here all of them almost cancel out very quickly so I'm just going to give you I'm going to give you the uh, say I'm going to give you the theta hat unit vector so this is going to be r times the cos of theta the cos of phi and that's going to be in the i hat direction plus r times the cos of theta times the sine of phi in the j hat direction I need to add, excuse me we need to subtract from that r times the sine of theta in the k hat direction like that okay and the last thing I'm going to show you is this let's say we have our vector r and I want to add on to r a small bit let's say dr so this is dr and I want to find out what's the infinitesimal change in uh, we'll say the vector if we move in the r direction well that means dl sub r is simply going to be equal to dr now what happens if we move in the theta direction so there's our, there's our vector r and what I want to do is move a small bit in by changing theta so here's theta here there's theta this is going to be d theta and well actually it won't be well I'll, I'll show you what that is in a second so this is r so this here is going to be r times the sine of theta which is approximately r of theta if you have a small angle or approximately r d theta okay it's approximately r d theta so we can say that d l sub theta is approximately r d theta and finally let's say we want to move in the phi direction so there's our coordinate space. Now we want to move, we want to get our vector. So our vector goes up goes like this. Now, so this is theta here. We know where r is. And if we move in the d phi direction, so I want to add a bit of phi. So it looks something like this. that's us moving in the phi direction so it's after in, in this area here and if you look that's very simply going to be we are on the top here or this this one here is r sine theta and as a result we can say that dl sub phi is equal to r sine theta d phi And finally then, the last thing I'm going to show you, if you want to get the infinitesimal volume element, it's simply going to be dl sub r multiplied by dl sub theta multiplied by dl sub phi. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. You might also give me a comment in the comment box below.